and it's setting up YouTube now. I really appreciate you doing this with me. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Yeah. Such a crazy period of time. It's nice to have have people around you can talk to and ask questions like this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It looks like we are live. So that is awesome. Uh, the live went well. Let's see, we're streaming. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and just introduce you, and then we'll just start chatting. And um, as people drift in and out, um, I have to turn this off. I can't watch myself talk or I'll get really confused. Okay. <laughs> all right, so I'm here with William Henry. My name is Christy Mattoon from Mind Rewire, and I'm here with um, William Henry of Ancient Alien fame. He's a Nashville-based author, investigated uh, mythologist, art historian, and TV presenter. He's an internationally rec recognized authority on human spirit spiritual potential, which is where I, I really get interested. Um, and then also a transformation um, and ascension. He, he has tons of information on this stuff. And I would right off the top, venture straight towards his teachings on the, the um, pearl. What is, I'm trying to remember the name of what that was called. It's awakening the pearl. The away, oh my gosh, what an amazing trip through history and, and process. I, it was so enriching. So I would send people towards that right off the top. Go check out The Awakening of the Pearl. Um, and then on the uh, Gaia channel, there is so much information that William has put out from The Awakened Soul, The Lost Science of Ascension, Arcanum, um, you can get all kinds of information on all of these things. So I would encourage you to go check out um, all of the different things on Gaia. So I think we want to just start today because there's so many different things going on. Um, I'm going to be asking questions probably that you can or may not be able to answer. So if you can't, it's no big deal. Just okay. whatever insight you can give us. But I don't want to approach this with caution either because a lot of people are just straight up in fear over you know, all the things that are going on in the world right now. Um, and so I think the open conversation is really, really necessary. And so I'm really excited to be here with you for this. Um, so much. let's start with the release on the 8th. I think it was, oh, thank you. Thank you. I think on December 8th was the release of the, um, the Israeli um, defense minister, Hayam Ashed announced that we actually do know there's aliens. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you know of that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just one little thing. He wasn't actually a defense minister. He's considered the father of the Israeli rocket program and was instrumental in the development of that. And he works for the, worked for the defense ministry, but he's not actually like the defense minister. But he's still a very high ranking person uh, mm -hmm. who was an acclaimed, is an acclaimed academic. 87 years old, and he has recently uh, published a book in which he states emphatically and uh, as, as fact that the Israeli government and the US government have been in business uh, under contract with uh, extraterrestrials. He doesn't tell us exactly who they are, but that these extraterrestrials have been doing research on humanity and for whatever reason have chosen to not make themselves entirely known right now. They're, they're waiting for humanity to evolve a bit further, um, suggesting that they're perhaps benign and that, um, that they are in fact part of a galactic federation to use the term that, that he used and that presumably they use, uh, that it's, it's watching humanity at this time and perhaps eagerly awaiting the time when we do evolve. Uh, he said that we, they're waiting for us to learn more about space and, and spacecraft. And I'm, I'm not quite sure what he was meaning about that. We can talk about my, my view on that in a moment, but in the big picture, this, this was the story. And it's a huge story because the world press picked up on it. Every major global website, newspaper, news outlet reported this story. And this means that there is clearly something happening in the disclosure area. These past three years since the, the Pentagon, the US Defense Department has acknowledged that these 
videos that they've started presenting, the, the famous Tic Tac video and others where Navy pilots are chasing UFOs and making videos of them are, are real and saying that the, this craft that they have uh, captured on video are not ours. And so this, is, this has major implications. And in fact, it was just earlier this spring in April when, uh, when COVID really hit that the Department of Defense acknowledged that, yeah, these are real, uh, real videos and this craft is not ours. And now here comes this major uh, global story uh, last week on December 8th about aliens and the Galactic Federation. So what the, the big picture here is that disclosure is going mainstream. People all around the world now have questions about this. What does it mean? If, if these craft are not uh, the US government, are they Chinese, are they Russian? If they're not earthly of earthly origin, where did they come from? Uh, major, major questions now arising. And one of the things that was said, um, and actually, and I'll throw the link up on the um, your commentary on all of this so people can go back and read it, um, that he was talking about that they wanted to understand the fabric of space more, that they were coming to understand the, the dark matter, supposedly. And I'm kind of like you, it makes me wince and go, really? Because you can travel through it and like, this doesn't make any sense. So how does this coincide with everything that's going on around our planet right now with COVID, with the pandemic? Well, is, is there an interleaking place in here somewhere that all of a sudden these aliens and the news is coming out to us? Yeah, I, in, in my opinion, watching this unfold, uh, the, the key term that I'm, I would use for this whole, everything that's transpired since March, spring of 2020, is about dehumanization. There is a global effort to keep us from touching one another, from identifying with as one another as even human. Uh, you have Elon Musk coming out and saying, because you've got one of these things in your hand and you use it every day and you've got apps on it, you're a cyborg. That means you're no longer fully human. So this is to me a, a major dehumanization, manipulation and behavior modification that's going on and governments around the world are simultaneously subscribing to it and without a, even seeming any recognition for, well, where could this be coming from? I mean, how could this possibly be so synchronized? People wondered, well, doesn't it take a while for a virus to spread around the planet? Doesn't it take more than like two weeks right? What was it planted everywhere around the planet? And then suddenly every single major government on the planet in lockstep is behaving exactly the same way. Nobody's questioning anything. And we're all supposed to go along with this. Put your gag on, shut up, stay home and forget about any kind of human future because that is completely off the table now from the perspective of these power players. They they seek to plug us into, well, in the case of the World Economic Forum, what they call the internet of bodies. They, they talk about 50 billion objects that are now live online, everything from your toaster and microwave to your car, to now your body is just another thing on this internet of things or what they call the internet of bodies. It's completely about taking away your humanity, completely about taking away any spiritual identification that you might have. And in my view, it's, it's alien. And if it's not extraterrestrials, a, a, a malevolent extraterrestrial force, then it's got to be AI. Uh, artificial intelligence, which I think of as an alien intelligence itself, this, this AI we've been warned repeatedly by the, the engineers and software designers who write the algorithms and run these companies that say AI is rapidly becoming smarter than we are as humans, not by a little, but by a lot. And in Elon Musk, not to pick on him, he just happens to be a very vocal supporter and advocate of all this. Uh, at the same time he supports it, he says AI, once it kicks in and achieves this super intelligence that's, or that's greater than human intelligence, it's going to treat us like house pets. And that's exactly what's happening. We're all being right. confined to our homes. We're being treated like pets. We don't have any freedom of speech anymore. You don't have any right to, of expression. It's all been taken away in a matter of months. And it's so if you're not looking to an extraterrestrial source for this, 
in my view, it's AI. That all the weirdness in our world is coming from AI and our merger, our blending with artificial intelligence, which is coming from the, the top down, major corporations that now think they're running the world and also organizations like the World Economic Forum. And now that was actually a question that somebody had sent in to ask you, is it possible that this AI and from the top down is that malevolent force that you're talking about that outside of this earthly force that's coming in and has maybe been here for eons? Well, I mean, that you can make that argument. Uh, I mean, and it's partly predicated on the fact that, I mean, you go back to ancient Greece, uh, the first robot was created by a Greek god named Hephaestus, according to the Greek story from about 450 BC. Hephaestus is a god of technology. He used to be the Sumerian god called Enki, another creator god associated with genetics and human transformation. And Hephaestus built a robot called Telos that guarded the island of Crete. And they talk about automatons and they talk about how Pandora was the first artificially created human. She was made not born, which means she's manufactured, and she didn't have a soul. And in the Greek story, the, the goddess of wisdom and war, Athena, blew a soul into Pandora, and she became a living being. My point is, is that there's been a conversation about artificial intelligent type beings on this planet for a long time. And now here we are making robots and synthetic beings, fully digital beings, in our own image. And at the same time, now we're ascribing spiritual attributes to them. I mean, we're now talking about, hey, you know, did you hear about the Romanian bodybuilder mm -hmm. who married his sex bot? And now uh, we're gonna have to ask the sex bots for consent to have sex with them. What? You know, I mean, what are you talking about here? It's craziness, so what it's craziness. Here is this bizarre connection that we're making to this artificial intelligence that literally is an alien being. It is non-human. And we don't know what it's going to become, but we know it's gonna happen very soon and we're about to find out. So what we have here are about seven- now Let billion, me- What we have is about 7 billion people on the planet all coming together as one in unity, all putting on the gags, all lining up now to get a vaccine, mostly. Uh, and just handing over all our humanity to um, machine intelligence. And that was my next question because today was D-Day and that's what they were calling the announcement of this vaccine that it's rolling out across America and they're bringing uh, more and more of it. And anybody who's been watching this occur today, there's all kinds of lives on Facebook and all over the place about you know, how they're gonna start implementing it and where they're starting and the, the places you can go to get yours and all the fluffy language that they were using surrounding it. Right. And I was listening to um, the general that was talking about it, um, General Perna, he kept using the word execute. They're executing a cadence, they're executing, execute, execute. And the people in the stream were like, what's with the word execute? Because that's what we feel like this is about to do to us. So the interplay of this vaccine into everything that you're talking about is the next step, to, in your opinion, is it the next step into this AI protocol that is transforming our humanness into this robotic, like whatever we're turning into? I can, I can well see how people make that argument and make that connection because you, we have to understand that, at least from my perspective, and I've been studying this transformation and our merger with AI since 2002. And this went back to a, an original US government Department of Commerce report where they were they brought all the major technology players together. Uh, and you know, remember, there, there was no iPhone then, there was no Google then, there was none of this was in existence. All of these companies, Facebook that run the world now are, are 10 years old. I mean, in a blink of an eye, that's what Corinthians said in, in a flash and the twinkling of an eye at the last Trump, we will all be changed, right? And, and here it is. This, I've been talking about this specifically in that, that prophecy since 2002. A long time. And so the Department of Commerce brings all these corporate people together, technology people and say, look, some of you are working on uh, 
Fitbits or computer science, some of you are working on nanotechnology, some of you are working on neuroscience, some of you are working in genetics, and then we got the pharmaceuticals over here. We want all of you guys to, to combine their technology into one seamless technology, bits, atoms, neurons, genes, plus the pharmaceuticals, and aim it at human skin. Because what we envision is that by 2035, we will be able to create a new golden age of unlimited wealth by merging humans with machines. This is the US Department of Commerce in 2002. And when I first was talking about this on radio programs and in interviews and in conferences, people thought I just dropped down out of Mars or something. That'll never happen. Or whew, thank God, you know, William's saying that won't happen till 2020 or so. And that was, so that was 18 years ago. Right. And now here it is. It's, it's right full frontal, it's happening. This is a planned merger or blurring, blending of our biology with, uh, with the digital sphere, with the technological sphere, with pharmaceuticals in, wedged in between. And some of us are, are gonna go, hey, this is great. I always wanted to be Tony Stark and Iron Man. I always want nanoparticles going through my blood. I always want that nano suit. I, I want IQ of 10,000. I wanna be able to fly, make myself invisible, live for hundreds of years. But then there's others of us that say, well, no, that's, that's not for us. We wanna remain organic. And this is where we're at right now. These are the, the two pillars that we're navigating right now, whether to, to continue to blend with the AI and be more of a cyborg as Elon Musk says, or to remain strictly organic. And I, one of the articles that I wrote was about the great reset and our and this blending, this blurring and covering this story about the, the great reset and the World Economic Forum since for four or five years now, since they, they started publicly talking about it. And my question there was, OK, if you don't take the vaccine, uh, what, how are they how are people going to know? Are they going to force us or people who don't take the vaccine to wear a special mask? Uh, and, or a special colored mask, an ex-Facebook exec just got hammered for mm -hmm. suggesting that because it's this sounds like the Nazis putting uh, yellow stars on the Jews. It sounds like the, the Catholic Church putting yellow crosses on the Cathars in the 13th century. The, this, we're branding people if they don't fall in step with the powers that be. And there's going to be enormous pressure on right. everyone to, uh, to step in line. Well, in some 20, I think it was um, 20,000 years ago, I was reading, there was an alteration in our DNA, right? That changed, I think, the frontal lobe and gave us um, where we're at now, actually, gave us the capability to learn and to become what we are now. How would you relate that alteration and where did that alteration come from? I think that was something that they look at as kind of an ET-ish intervention or an alien intervention. Um, is that, I mean, we're way beyond, like this was a simple, simple DNA alteration that caused us to be what we are now. This next one isn't gonna be so much. I'm hearing, um, and I think you've used the same words that they're stealing our soul, that they're taking the essence of who we are. It's, it's complicated, it's a very complicated question. Um, there's no doubt. Neuroscience has for a long time known that the, our neocortex, the, the frontal, aspect of our brain, the, the, they call it the neocortex, which means new bark. It's the thin outermost layer of our brain. It's part of our brain that makes us all human. It's where our science comes from, art, everything, all human culture, civilization comes from the activation of the neocortex. Neuroscience has no idea how it was activated. We do know that it was the product of a genetic an intentional genetic manipulation. They point to the, the National Science Foundation right. points specifically to a gene, GBR1, and a chromosome at the end of it, chromosome two, that was intentionally merged. There was two uh, ape chromosomes that were merged. And they know it was intentional because the telomeres on these chromosomes are usually on the outside, but on chromosome two, it's on the inside. And then there's evidence that there was a cleanup job, that there was some editing that went on to stabilize that fusion. That fusion is what caused the neocortex to suddenly be activated. And they've looked at this and say, well, who, who could have done that? How, how could that have happened? Was it cosmic rays? Was it group sex? Was it cooking meat? Was it uh, psychedelics? These are 
seriously considered by academics as the explanation for how this fusion happened. They give every, every explanation except for the one that makes the most sense, extraterrestrials. And then I point people to the, uh, the Egyptian god Ptah, who the ancient Egyptians said fashioned the human body and just so happens to have a double helix in his hieroglyph, which Egyptologists say, oh, the ancient Egyptians knew nothing about DNA. Well, how come the God you say fashioned the, the human body has a double helix in his hieroglyph then, pal, right? Obviously, this is what happened. This is the God, God of technology that uh, appears in various cultures, tweaked our, our DNA, but for what purpose? And that is the, that's why the question is so complicated. And we, we can in part answer that question by, at least in my opinion, by looking at it from the perspective of Judeo-Christian symbolism, because if we think of the spinal cord as the tree of life, we think of the neocortex as the, the bark on the uppermost part of that tree, then the moment when this activation happened is recorded in the book of Genesis is that moment when Eve reached up and took the fruit from the serpent in the tree of life or the tree of knowledge. And we became as the gods. This is, I, I believe that that is the moment that it happened and here's why. It's because without an activated neocortex, we do not have the power of judgment. In other words, we can't tell the difference between light, dark, male, female, earthly flesh, celestial flesh, so forth. Everything's just all kind of like, a, a, like living in a dream. It's all a blur. So I believe that that moment when Eve takes that apple from the serpent symbolizes that moment of judgment because right after that, that's when Eve looks around and goes, oh, we're naked. And now, we, now she can discern good from evil. So right. without an activated neocortex, that's not happening. So that pivotal moment in our evolution, I believe is, is described in the book of Genesis at that moment. And here's why it's important to us right now. It's because there's only one species on the planet right now that is putting a new layer, a new intelligent brain system, overlaying it over the entire planet. That's us. And we are now creating this 5G network that will enable all these, every device on the planet to go live. In other words, to have a camera, to record, to interact with every other device on the planet, including our own brains. Elon Musk wants to sprinkle nanotechnology particles in our neocortex to give us super intelligence. Guess what? That's a new layer of our brain. Did the gods who activated our neocortex have this in mind? Was that the plan all along that 200,000 years later, we would ultimately merge with AI and become super beings? Or is there a faction of the gods that wants to keep us at an organic level? This is where we're at right now. We have to decide like today. I mean, we've got maybe at the most, I would say <laughs> yes. a year at the most at the rate we're going. After that, wow. every single human and on I, this planet will no longer be human. I was gonna say, and I, yeah, we won't be human. And I've heard that even the, uh, the test that they're giving people that toothpick or the q-tip that they're sticking so far up into your brain is hitting the bone I mean they're coming so far back in there that that is what they're doing is implanting some of that um, nanotechnology there's you know rumors all over the web saying be careful if you let them do that to you because and, and who knows unfortunately I don't know that anybody knows no I've had it done and uh, I, I know I know that that scenario well and uh it's possible that, that that is what happened. Uh, I don't often tell this story, but I'll tell it here. I had back about, uh, gosh, must have been 2005. Uh, I was traveling to Colorado and there's a major flu epidemic in Colorado. And um, I decided, I, you know, I've never had a flu vaccine, but I, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get a flu vaccine this time. It's just a really dumb thing to do, right? And uh, so I get the flu vaccine, I get home a couple hours later, I'm sitting at my desk and I hear someone call my name behind me in the room and I go, yeah, there's nobody there. There was nobody there. And I left that, I still believe that 
that flu vaccine possibly had some kind of nano antenna in it or something, even back then. And they, they were just checking to make sure I was online. And I, you know, I don't know if any, that's ever happened to anybody else, wow. but it was one of the spookiest things that ever happened to me. And I, it, it's just perhaps coincidence that it came on the heels of getting my one and only flu vaccine, but hey, that's, that's my story. Wow. And I mean, it's interesting because I've heard voices behind me, but I would attribute them to spirit or I would attribute it to God or, you no. know, different things. I've never no, not related this one. to like, a vaccine. Uh, William, or... William, right? It, it was not any kind of voice giving instruction. It was just, hey, you know, can you hear me? <laughs> so. Wow. Oh, my gosh. And it's so interesting, you know what? So, I mean, and we know all this is going on and that's one of the things like people get nervous and we get scared. And if you go into fear, you're, you're dysregulating your own immune system, plus dysregulating your environment around you. And we know all that, you know, with energy healing and with some of the understandings through Ascension and, and, and other um, ideas, right? What do you do? Right. We know this is going to happen. You can't stop it at this point. You yep. can't, Right? Nope. We're not going to be able to um, that, take that is it apart. The, what do we do? That is the question. And if I were playing devil's advocate, to, in part to answer the question, and again, um, I'm, I'm not the expert on this. I have been studying these this area for nearly 20 years now and keeping up with the literature. And I've written a lot of articles on my website about it and done a lot of talks about it. And I'm, I'm uh, my birth sign is La Libra, so I, I try to look at both sides and find balance naturally. And so that means in my research, I, I try to walk in their shoes. Uh, what are they trying to accomplish? And if I were representing them and trying to talk with people about their aims and so forth, what would I say? And, and if so, if I'm playing devil's advocate and I am representing uh, what they used to call FANG, Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Google, you know, whatever term, I call them the beast. So if I'm if I'm representing the beast, I'm going to say, come on, you, you know, you're not your body. You know, you're not your body. You're, you, you, this is just a suit that you wear. Why, why are you so attached to it? Why are you so afraid of putting something on or in your body? You know, don't sweat it because you as a spiritual person deep down know and believe your spirit, your soul goes on no matter which container you on. You could, you could be in a cat's body, right? So why, why are you so attached to this body? And that, that is the place I would ask people to start to think about this. And then uh, the, my uh, taking off the devil's advocate hat, I would be saying, oh, it's time for us to really be taking care of our body, of our vehicle, to make sure that everything that's going into it is pure as possible to keep our frequency as high as possible. And we wanna make sure that we are in direct contact with our soul from a, every moment that we wake up. I mean, put it on your refrigerator door, put it on your mirror. Hey, I'm a soul. What am I doing today to feed my soul, to protect my soul? I, I do ascension talks and have for a long time. And I, I, I say to people, okay, you, you, you've got your career plan, you've got your health plan, you've got your retirement plan, you've got your vacation plans. Tell me about your ascension plan. And, and how much time did you spend on your Ascension plan today? I love that. Three hours, five hours, three minutes, 30 right. seconds. And they act like it's a trick question, but it's not. And my, the, because the point I'm making is that, oh yeah, we really don't think about some of these things until we're in a real crisis like we are now, but that's what's got to come forward. We have to have clarity about who we are as spiritual beings absolute knowledge that we are eternal, that yeah, these guys can try to shove whatever they want into every orifice of my body. And likely they have already done so without my knowledge or consent. What are you really drinking and eating and, and breathing? We, we don't know. I mean, the fact is that we could already have these nanoparticles mm -hmm. that are in the vaccine in our body already. And it went undetected and we've been living pretty much okay. I mean, health challenges and all of that aside. So my point is, is that we, we don't wanna overreact into the fear zone, but we do right now wanna hit the gas 
big time on getting clarity about who we are as spiritual beings, the, our soul, and where we're going from here. Right. And I'm really glad you said that. It's actually what I teach also. I teach how to get into the heart and get in touch with your spirit and get in tune with that part of you and have a protocol set in play for people that I work with that it's three minutes every hour. You're touching back. You're getting back in tune with that part of you to stay in that in that track because we were not taught this. We weren't taught how to be spiritual beings in a human body. You were taught how to be a human being in this crazy world and try to filter through everything. Right. And it literally takes a huge shift in not only perception, but a shift in what am I doing every hour of every day that's perpetuating me back to my true self and not back into the mayhem that's surrounding us. Right. And so I, I'm not advocating, uh, you know, yeah. go live on a mountain or something like that. We have to, we, we are in a circumstance that we're in now. We're in the culture. I would love to. Now. Pardon me? Yeah. And we have to. I said, I would love to go live on a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I know. But we live in this world, so we have to make it work. But we have to live in this world from a, a, a soul's perspective. And that that is part of what this is prompting us to do right now. And that that is the, where the the source of the power is going to come from because and again i have articles out about this subject on my website from the perspective of these developers and these engineers and the companies that are putting this technology on us and in us this idea that you have a soul is is age-old superstition and mysticism it's folklore to them you're just information and this this happened in the 1950s when we discovered the the digital nature of our dna that that we can cut, copy, paste our, our, our DNA and, and alter it. And that essentially it's just information. And that got extrapolated into, oh, well, yeah, you're not that soft, cuddly, squishy, spiritual being you thought you are. You're just information, especially to these people. Uh, like Facebook, uh, they, they think of your soul. Right. What you think of your, your soul uh, is an eternal God a gift from God. To them, your soul is just everything, all the pictures you put up on Facebook. And all your all your messages, all your phone calls that have been recorded, everything, and that that they own. By the way, uh, they they you've put right. that up there. Right. You think you own all of that? You're wrong. These corporations own your data. Therefore, they own you, and they've made billions upon billions of dollars selling you amongst themselves trying to through behavior modification get coerce you into buying whatever listening in on your conversations through your smartphone and all of that to them you you are just that information and it is it irrelevant if you're if that information your soul to them is in one of these containers one of these or some digital being online living in a sim simulated reality, this new creation which they're which they're creating and are now coaxing our children to identify with and eventually go live in and drop their, their worthless, smelly physical body that screwed up this planet. That's that's where they come from essentially. Now, William, you just now you just now made a really interesting distinction that I don't think I've heard put quite that way before that the soul that they're looking at is the information that you posted or put on Facebook or put in Instagram, wherever you're posting your stuff. And even here in YouTube, that that information to them is your worth. It's your, right. Your soul, as you just called it. That's you. Where when we're talking about the soul, I'm talking about more this internal, eternal part of you, the spirit part of you. Yeah. that goes on. So when they're saying that they're trying to captivate your soul or right, put it inside this technology, they're not talking about the spirit part of you. They can't take that, and I'm assuming, is what you're saying. And, and not to politicize this, but I'll make two points that came up during the recent presidential election. Uh, President-elect Joe Biden used the expression, build back better. That comes from the World Economic Forum. It's used by multiple governments around the planet that all subscribe to the globalist agenda of merging us with AI. His subtext was battle for the soul of America. And supporters would say, oh yeah, because we hate Donald Trump who destroyed the soul of America and turned it into this decrepit country, 
racist, misog misogynistic, blah, 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 capitalistic. And it's like, are you sure about that? Because they are battling for the soul of America right now. And by that, they literally mean the soul of America that you won't talk about the soul from a spiritual, metaphysical, mystical point of view once the globalist agenda is in place. Your soul is just information. And I'll give you another example, one that came up in the election. This one really, boy, it, it, it uh, played with my head for a, a long time. And I, I, it probably will play with yours too. Um, do you remember a few years ago, there was that horrific tragedy at Parkland High School in Florida, where a, a number of teenagers were, were killed by a, a, a kid with, with a gun, right? One of them was named Wok, and I, I can't remember his last name. I, I should remember it now, but what happened was is that back uh, in October, his parents put out a commercial, uh, an anti-gun commercial, and they told with great angst that we lost our son and we are anti-gun and we could not think of a better way to express this, this feeling and this message than to bring, bring our son back. So they agreed to let a, a CGI company recreate him with AI. They turned over photos of him, mannerisms, recordings of his voice, and here he comes. Hey, it's me, walk, I'm back. And when I heard that, I went, oh my God, oh my God. The message that he's sending is that this computer generated image is him, but it's not, it's not. His, his soul, right. I believe is somewhere else. And I'm not disparaging his parents. I'm not disagreeing with their decision. I'm just observing from someone who studies the metaphysical aspects of AI and its implications that if, I don't care if you want a gun or not, but when you're giving kids the message that, a, that he is a resurrected being because now he lives in a computer, I completely disagree with that. I, I, I think scary. that is it, the, totally yeah, the wrong it is message. Very scary. And that, but that is the message that Silicon right. Valley, the gods of Silicon Valley want you to take into heart that you, yeah, just dump your physical body, pal. You polluted this planet long enough. Get the hell out of here. And oh yeah, we'll let you live in our simulated reality. Oh yeah, we own it. We're gonna still gonna tax you. It's still gonna cost you. You're still gonna make us money because you're still just data. But yeah, come on, go ahead, drop your physical body. Do us all a favor and uh, leave the planet, will you? That's their, that's their underlying message. It might not match quite that angry tone that I'm delivering it with, but that is their message that you, it doesn't matter if this is William Henry or some uh, computer bot, uh, uh, that's still me. Uh, no, it's not. No, it is not. And it's criminal to start no, putting that message on kids. It's but not. this is what Steven Spielberg's doing. This is what Facebook is doing. Th this is what, this is their, their, their ploy. The agenda. Yeah. It's you know, and years ago, Stephen King actually came out with a book called Pet Cemetery. And it was the same kind of idea where a person died. In fact, it was a child who died and there was a cemetery. And the story went that if you can bury the person in cemetery and do whatever ritual and wait for a period of time, they would rise again. But when they came back, they were not the same person because it was the body coming back without the soul. And it yeah. was a petrifying movie. The idea of it was just like, oh my gosh, like where on earth did you come up with this thought? Because, yeah. but that's exactly what they're doing here. You're bringing and resurrecting this person without, without that part of them. And, and this takes us to the yeah, absolute sad. heart yeah. of, of what these people believe. And, that, and again, Elon Musk, I'd love to have uh, a conversation with him sometime uh, about this because he over and over and over and over again says, this is just a simulation. This is just a video game. And within 10 years, our video games are gonna be even better than this. So, so why do you wanna live in this world? You know, and my question to him would be, why, why are you making Tesla cars? Why don't you just kill yourself? If you really believe that, that we are just living in a video game, why, why, what's the point of existing at all? 
and, and his response would be something like, oh, because that's what God, not God, but the, the, the programmer who created this video game that we live in, which we think of as God, they think of as a video programmer. This is how science and spirituality now can talk to each other. As long as you say God is not the creator of the universe, but rather as a programmer, like it's some teenager on Venus or something programming this video game, some hacker kid, uh, you can talk to scientists. And this is the core of what they believe that all of this is a simulation. And it doesn't matter if you're in this physical body or if you're living in, a, in the simulations that we're now creating. Um, that, that is the reality that we are in. And so this is the challenge to all spiritually minded people is that as Elon Musk would say, hey, hey babe, we're, you know, we're, we're launching satellites. We're, we're gonna be able to prove to you that we live in a simulation, that none of this is real. And so that's and what that means is that there is no existence outside this game. And so it's incumbent now upon spiritual people, right. this is our challenge to prove that that is incorrect, to prove that the pure land of Buddhism, the, the, the third heaven and seventh heaven of Judaism, Christianity and Islam are separate realities outside of this one that our souls came from and will return to after uh, we make our transition. That's where they're at. Now, in that same line, uh, William, the new age theology, that this is all an illusion. It's kind of the same idea as the idea that this is all the program you're in the simulation, right? It's all an illusion. That's, this isn't really here. This isn't really. Let me, let me put my devil's advocate hat on. See, it says 666 right here. Honey. You've known this, that this is just a simulation because gotcha. the Buddhists told you this for a long time. New Agers believe this. This is all an illusion, right? Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. You, you know we're right. This is just a simulation. Mm -hmm. The difference is, is that spiritual traditions, Buddhism, Christianity, Islam, even Hinduism, others say, there's a separate reality outside of this one. The simulation theorist, Nick Bostrom at Oxford, Elon Musk, and all these guys say, mm -mm. no, there's not. There is no reality beyond this one. And this is it. And, and that is the distinction. And so that's why I say, no, that the new age argument, it, 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 it doesn't apply here. It, it doesn't apply. Yeah, it is metaphysically speaking an illusion. We all bring this to life in our imagination and so forth. But this is not the only reality. There are realities outside of the reality that we exist in, source reality. And I think that's the whole point of bringing the, the aliens down or the ETs and getting in touch with that other part that's out there because it makes you realize there is more than just what we think is right here. Right. And what we were taught is only, right? We're the only things alive in the universe. and. Right. It just isn't so, but I think that it leads hand in hand. It just all connects together. Right. And so I mean, you said some words. You said the challenge to spiritually minded people. The challenge to spiritually minded people. Finish that. Finish that sentence. Yeah. The, the challenge what? to spiritually minded people is we have to be able to prove that there is an existence outside of this one. That means heaven is real. The afterlife is real. That's what we have to be able to provide evidence of. We have anecdotal evidence, we have stories, we have belief. On the simulation side, they're saying, we have satellites and math. And so these are the two conflicting poles once again of the organic belief in a, in a reality outside of this one or this, just the, the purely scientific technological belief that, hey, you know, we, we launched satellites, we did the math. You know what they believe? What, this is what Elon Musk says. Uh, you know, you look out in the night sky, Christy, and you see those stars, right? And you think they exist? You think they're real? Those, all those planets? Yeah. They're not. Yeah. They're just like a video game that's rendered. That they, they, they don't even exist. And, that, and there's now, that's what they're launching satellites to show that, yeah, we found the origins of the universe and we found out, yeah, we're in a, we're in a it's just a video game that, that we're in. And there is no game outside of this game. It's, it's, to me, it's a frightening, frightening way to live your life because again, it goes back to that question. Elon Musk, uh, Mark, uh, or Nick Bostrom at Oxford, why don't you, why don't you just kill yourself? What, what's the point, right? 
what is the point? Right. I mean, right. Instead both, of killing all of us, this you have to take game. yourself out. You know, you're both bald. And Elon, you take all your hair implants to fake everybody out that you really got hair. And Nick Bostrom, you're bald. Why did you choose a game player uh, to if, and be so just kind of nerdy and weird? You know, why, why would you choose a character that people actually liked, Mark Zuckerberg? Why are you guys all so robotic, right? And I'm getting personal now, but I mean, this is just the observations that people make. It's like, no, I oh, agree with you. Are, they're really different. Yeah. They're really different, and, but they, they want to represent yeah. the future. I mean, can you imagine, we, we were talking a moment ago about Hephaestus, this Greek god. A thousand years from now, they're going to be talking about Lord Elon and Lord Zuckerberg and, and how the god Zuckerberg mm -hmm. came down and gave us our reality, Facebook. That's all anybody's going to know. They won't know anything outside of these realities. And these guys that, that we are supporting today will be the gods of that, that new world, that, of that world. And they'll, they could still be you know, that from now. Pardon me? That reminds me of um, that reminds me of how years ago I brought was brought up in a Christian home with all the Christian classical you know yeah. thoughts that, and one of them was that don't look up into the sky. Astrology is evil, right? Astrology, astronomy, all of it was evil according to the the church that I went to, and I, I find it really amusing now because when I look up into the sky, and I was telling a group of people I coached this the other day, I look up into the night sky and you just watch and you can see satellites zooming by. And then if you keep watching and you kind of let your vision, you know, kind of smear it open and you look through your periphery, you start seeing things zigzagging around and you can see things that it's not a star, it's not a satellite. So what is it? And these people would have you think that that's not real and there's nothing there. And it's just like the Christian teachings, the ancient, you know, that you don't look into the sky. And even the Bible clearly, clearly says, look into the heavens open your eyes, look up, see what I'm telling you through the yep. visions and wonders that are out there. And then they're telling yep. you, no, don't look, it's not real. It's craziness. It's all just craziness. Right. I know. Can I, mean, I ask you a few questions that are, that are coming in from the chat box real quick? Please. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, so we've got one that says, are there good aliens trying to help us? Are there good aliens trying to help us? I believe there are, uh, and the reason why is because in many, many of the ancient mythologies that refer to what we interpret as extraterrestrial beings or aliens, there's conflict. There's, there's always the gods that want to uplift us to the level of the gods or even exceed the gods in their capability. And then there are those that say, are you crazy? Uh, because then they'll realize that we're just fake gods and they won't need us and they might challenge us and they might even supersede us. So there's, there's that aspect of it that tells me that that's so. And then you have just these weird interventions that have happened historically that have altered history. You have scientific discoveries that come from people having dreams about extraterrestrials or claiming they have encounters that alter human history. So yeah, I do believe that there are definitely benevolent aliens that are here to, to assist us. Yeah, and so, and along in that same line, somebody else had asked earlier, uh, would you consider Jesus, who was transfigured, right, into the rainbow body, as you would teach it, um, was he an, actually an alien, or was he a human that transfigured, or how do you, how do you draw the line and define that, or do you? Well, I'm going to put on my 666 cap again and say, well, you know, Jesus, he, we're in a video game, and he was just a super user. You know, in these games, they have super users that can access the code of the game and alter the game. And that's what Jesus was. I don't believe that, but I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, he's, uh, that, that is kind of the ultimate question here of, of Jesus's role. He definitely, I, I subscribe, let me answer the question this way. I subscribe to uh, the belief of the Essenes, Jewish mystics, who for about 150 years before the time of Jesus were, according to the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, their, their, their texts, in particular, their, their constitution, which was called the community rule, they said, we're, we're calling in a high celestial being who will assist us in putting on our crown of glory and our robe of unending light. And he will help us to ascend to the celestial city, Sion, or the new Jerusalem. And that, I believe, was Jesus. And that, that was his role. It was a, an activator of, of human potential 
and demonstrating what is possible with our human body. I mean, you have to remember that my body, your body, Jesus's body, we're, we're, we're the same body physiologically. We can, we can do the same things. And that's what, in part, what he was demonstrating. And I think that was his role. And if you want to think of Jesus as a extraterrestrial, I mean, he did speak of many other worlds that he had sheepfolds and, and other uh, round, many other sheepfolds and uh, speaking of other worlds. And he stated clearly, I am from above, you are from below. So he's clearly talking about uh, parallel worlds that and one that he emerged from and I believe was here to assist us in, in making our ascension to that world. Yeah, I agree with you on that. And I think a lot of times people think of the heavens or think of this, this other place where Jesus ascended to us. Is, um, and it probably is more perfect than this is, but as above, so below. If we're fighting down here and there's a war going on here, there's a war going on there too. Right. And um, right. I don't know, when you start really opening your eyes and looking at it that way, you start realizing there's more to this. There's way more to this than we have any idea. Um, all right. So somebody, so in that same light, somebody asked if there's, there's bad aliens then that want to hurt us. And I think we would equate that through Christian mysticism as demons or whatever word you would use for that dark energy right from the new age perspective so that would be a, a yes to that answer in my belief system anyway yeah and this is a, a conversation that we've been having the past five years or so uh even with silicon valley engineers uh, that point to their technology literally as being demonic and uh talking about how the only way to understand like quantum computers and so forth is to compare it with what the demons did, the fallen angels did in, in the Old Testament. And uh, that, that's pretty in your face shocking, but I, I think it's, we have to uh, be open to that possibility. I mean, we've never experienced anything like this on this planet where it, it is clearly a, a takeover and it's a denial of who we are as human yeah. beings. And this, as we talked about the dehumanization that's going on globally now. It is anti-human, and you can stretch that if you want to say, yeah, it's anti-Christ too. It, it is demonic, and if they are successful, many of the qualities that you and I think of as being what I identify us as humans, empathy, compassion, sympathy, will, will cease to exist, will cease to exist, will be more robotic, right. will be... Uh, all towing the line, trying to make sure we're on this, getting the, our credits on the social credit system and not expressing our view, not expressing talents. And that, 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 is, a, that is a demonic scenario, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. The whole political correctness, the way they've forced us to speak or not to speak, I think is all demonic, has and definite inter, interface there. And, and ultimately... I, people say, yeah, this, it's China. It's China. And okay, it, it, it's China. Um, but you, you look around and you see who's in league with China. Silicon Valley is in league with China. They're doing exactly the same thing in America with the social credit system and, and taking away our freedom of speech and censorship and cancel culture and all that garbage. Um, they're doing the same thing as the Chinese, but these people are not Chinese. Oh, okay, then they're, they're communists. Well, yeah, but they are also capitalists. These guys make billions of dollars. And so then if, okay, if they're not, it's not that they're China, Chinese or communists, then, then what are they? And you know, they talk about how uh, there was a, a Chinese uh, lecturer, uh, I think it was an economics professor, if I recall right, they were saying, We've got old friends in the US government and high places in the US government and in Silicon Valley. And I'm thinking, what do you mean by old friends? Uh, like 10 year old friends, you've been friends for 10 years or 30 years, 50 years, or do you mean old friends? Like what you all share in common mm -hmm. is an ideology that is demonic and alien. You hate people, you hate people. That's why you want to control them and censor them and can't and cancel them. You despise humans. Why don't you just come out and tell us, right? Instead of sneaking in, putting up something like right. Facebook in here, or giving us a phone so you can, 
surveil us 24 seven and now use these toys that we've grown, become addicted to, to control us. It's because you hate us. That, that's, that's what it is. You despise well, I would it. even ask, what are you really? But, yeah, and yeah. what are you really? Because you're not human if you hate humans. You're not exactly. one of us. Exactly, and I don't right? mean to you're disparage aliens by saying that some kind of alien race would do this, but they're all in league together and they, they must be subscribing to a belief system we're not completely aware of or answering to an even higher element or force that we're not yet aware of, but we'll probably soon be uh, getting to meet if, if we're not careful. Right. The difference between angels and aliens? Question mark. Well, yeah. Is there a I difference? Mean, I, I, I can't think of a difference between them. I and mean, when you think of an angel, you're, you're usually thinking of a, of a totally benevolent being. Um, but by definition, when you're talking about like the fallen angels, this is gets into the kind of the crooks of the argument. Why are the fallen angels called fallen angels? Well, if you go to Sunday school, it's because they're, they're evil. No, that's not why they're called the fallen angels. They're called the fallen angels because they're no longer in their celestial bodies. They're in their earthly bodies. And good angels and bad angels are fallen angels. And this was one of the big prohibitions in the Old Testament, especially, is that, hey, you know, if, if you're a, a celestial being in your light body coming from God's throne, you're not allowed to cross over the boundary and take on a physical incarnation. And likewise, if you're in a physical body and you want to ascend to God's throne, uh -uh, you can't do that on your own. You have to wait for an invitation. And... God will tell you, he'll send an invite when it's time for you to ascend. The same guy that said you can't look up at the stars is the same guy that said you can't take it upon yourself to ascend when you want. His name was King Josiah. This happened in a changing of the gods in about 600 BC. And so this is just a, a, a new, new philosophy, if you will, a new mandate came into vogue because before King Josiah's time, uh, they were all connecting with the stars. They were looking into the stars, connecting with the heavenly host. There was story after story of humans following the path of ascension and ascending into the stars. God had a wife. Her name was Ishtara. And uh, then after Josiah's reforms, he brings in the Ten Commandments, forbids looking up at the stars. God forbid you'll connect with the heavenly host. And ascension is not, no longer a possibility on an individual basis. And this all happened at the same time, and this is what we're living now, but what we're, uh, we're working our way out of, hopefully. Yeah, definitely, hopefully. Um, I'm gonna ask you a little bit about Ascension and, and your thoughts on that, like quickest path to get there, although there isn't probably a quick path. Somebody on here just asked um, before that though, that um, is there a plan for public disclosure of ETs? It was disclosed on um, December 8th. There was news out of Israel and that was at the beginning of this. So you can go back and watch the first part. I'll also put a link to a few different sites, news sites where you can go find that information and, and read more, more about it because it was publicized in quite a few places. Um, and then one more question on here says, the Bible says we have have a wrestling with the wicked spirit forces in heavenly places. Um, that's where, that's what we are living. Um, big tech is leading it, question mark. Definitely. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I would say yes to that. Yeah. Big tech, big right tech. now, that is what's going on in this period of time. Yeah. Yep. We have to yeah. uh, turn off, turn off your big tech. Turn off the big tech. Yep, exactly. It is, they want to mummify you. They want you living in one of these bodies for hundreds of years with super intelligence. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. You know, this is like Satan taking Jesus up to the pinnacle of the tower and saying, all this can be yours. Super intelligence, longevity, everything. All you got to give me for it, pal, is your soul. And that's exactly the moment that we're in right now. And we, we have to reject that because our... Our objective on earth, I don't think, is to be here for 100 years or 400 years or 1,000 years. Our objective is to have this experience, act as an agent of our creator, meaning spread love and light, and then to ascend from this realm, not to stay here permanently. 
But Silicon Valley seems to have this idea, oh, we want to just replace all your body parts, all your organs, even your brain, and uh, infuse you with our technology so that you can, you can stay here for as long as you like. And if you get tired of this container, we'll put you in another container, but uh, you're not going anywhere. So that's, that's the decision we're all making. So, right. so talk to us. Talk to us about Ascension. And I've, I've done, I w I'm gonna go back and just repeat. And I said it at the beginning, if you haven't heard um, William's class on the awakening of the pearl, go find, go to his website and find that and, um, and get that course because it is very enlightening and it gives you tons of information. But can you just give us the skinny on it real quick? When we're trying to create our re rainbow body, are we creating that? Is it something that comes to us? It's, it's handed into us? How does, how does all this work? And where, and this is a question I actually have, where does the Merkaba intersect <laughs> with the rainbow body when you're trying to get all of this turned on and lined up? Um, yeah, what we're, we're talking about. That was a lot about, at once, go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what we're talking about, it, it's really a, a Judeo-Christian belief. And it ties back into our conversation about the neocortex uh, and the Adam and Eve and the, the serpent of Eden. Um, because after we take that fruit from the serpent in the, in the tree of knowledge and are, with, are prevented from uh, encountering the tree of life, humanity was evicted from Eden, according to the book of Genesis, by the Old Testament God, Yahweh, who did two things when we were evicted. One, he built a gate at the east of Eden, placed two cherubim on either side of the gate or seraphim angels and a flashing flaming sword in the middle and forbade us to return. And when we were evicted from Eden, we were also given coats of skin. Traditional Christianity, you can go to any of the 10,000 churches uh, in America or more, and the, the preacher will tell you, oh, those coats of skin. Yeah, that, that must have been like deer skin or lamb skin, something like that. But in the esoteric or mystical version of the story subscribed to in Judaism and Christianity and Islam, the coats of skin were our human skins, our flesh and blood bodies. And the belief is that when we existed in Eden, it was a place of pure light and pure love, a higher frequency realm where we weren't in flesh and blood bodies. And that with the activation of the neocortex, now we're in a flesh and blood body. We can discern and judge, make judgment. Hey, wait a minute, I'm, I'm naked. And what that meant was I'm no longer in my divine light body, my original true light body. And all these stories talk about the description of Adam and Eve and their original divine light bodies, rainbow colored bodies and, and so forth that match up with the Tibetan rainbow light body tradition. And so from that perspective, all of human history, and, and I wrote about this in my book, Skingularity is Near, it's a free ebook that you can download from my website, williamhenry.net, it spells this story out. All of history, from that moment forward is a quest to return to our original divine nature as light beings. And in, the, in that intervening time, these traditions began to develop that we can transmute our physical flesh and blood body. We can phase it back into our original light body. And this is, for example, what you mentioned the Tibetan rainbow light body tradition, they call it the great perfection. It's the belief that the human body, we can accelerate the frequency of the body until it phases into this light body form, rainbow light body form, leaving behind only hair, toe and fingernails, which have no nerves to be transmuted. And the idea is that this is a, this is a normal functioning of the body. This is what we're all supposed to be learning to do, what we can all naturally do. And it, it, when you think about it, it'd be, be kind of fun. It's like Star Trek beaming without the technology. So in other words, we have this built into us that we can have this experience in this 3D realm. And then when we choose to, we can activate the latent capabilities in our DNA, perhaps put there by Pata, that enables us to phase back into our original divine nature, our light body, then travel to other star systems, uh, and then if we choose to phase back into our physical flesh and blood body. And so that is the, the ultimate 
quest according to these spiritual traditions. And it's, I've, I've found it in the Tibetan and the, in the Judeo-Christian tradition and the Egyptian and others. They all have a, a little piece of this puzzle that's suddenly now really coming into our awareness and people all around the world now are starting to open up to this concept. Right, and I've heard, um, and I think it was Greg Braden in um, a thing he had done on Gaia talk about um, how anything that they're trying to do with technology, you can do with your body. You just have to learn how to do it. And we've actually turned off a lot of our capabilities because we're not utilizing it. It's just like exercising a muscle. And once you start exercising it, you get stronger and stronger at it. And then and he says anything, anything they're doing with technology, you should be able to do with the capability of this technology. Right, because it's all a, 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 an analog, if you will, of what we can do naturally. I think, yeah, Greg must have been listening to my talks. I'm really glad that Greg's out talking about this now because he's got such a big voice and a big platform. It's yeah. really, really great. And again, here's where the nuance comes into the conversation again, because my answer to that would be, yeah, I'm 99.9% .9 sure, Greg, that we can do this on our own. And I'm that 0.1% open to the possibility that we can augment our body with technology in order to accomplish it. And so this is the kind of the caveat that this, this slight sliver that I leave the door open. And here's why I, I came to that idea. And it, it actually came from a conversation that uh, the Pope's astronomer, I can't remember his name, he was in, uh, in Arizona at, uh, oh shoot, uh, darn, I've, I've just lost this, uh, my train of thought about the, 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 the name of this priest. But anyway, um, the, the, he, he said, look, here's the Catholic Church's position on extraterrestrials. If they exist and Martians come and they land in front of the Vatican, we'll baptize them. And then the Pope also uh, said something to this effect too, saying, um, you know, guys, we have to be open to the possibility that these extraterrestrials might not look like us. And um, this, he was kind of saying, y'all are a bunch of bigots. If, uh, if you're thinking they're gonna look like, like you, um, that might not be possible. And then here's the, the punchline, who are we to limit God's creativity. And that really sunk in my mind. I'm thinking, okay, mm -hmm. uh, who are we to limit God's creativity? What, maybe God does, is, has intended for us to have develop all this incredible technology that we can become as gods like that. Who are we to say, oh, I'm a, I'm a bigot for saying anybody that augments themselves with this technology um, is anti-God. That, so that's why I leave the door open just that 0.1% that maybe this is how we are supposed to do it. I don't think so, but, and I do totally agree with what Greg was saying is that our, our body can already do this naturally. And we've got to learn how to open up these vast resources, untapped resources within ourselves before we make this permanent alteration to our DNA and to all future bodies, because once we do this, there is no turning back. There will be no turning back. Right, right, right. And I think that's the scariest part of it. If, it, if we do do it and it's a mistake and it causes alterations we don't want, there is no going back. William, in this period of time, you know, December 21st in a lot of circles is being looked at as like the pivotal moment. And I know people set dates aside all the time is this, and I think you had talked about it um, in your book, The Secret of Zion, there's an ancient prophecy um, that predicts a time when um, the light of Zion will rise and we'll experience the ascension of our soul vibration. And I think the way you had worded it was our soul vibration as we are anointed by the hidden power of the light. Um, is this that time? And I, I don't know if you can answer that or not with any relative certainty, but it sure does feel like we are moving closer and closer towards that time. Go ahead. Yeah, we are. I mean, I, I can't say that this conjunction on December 21st is it. I know it will be pivotal because we will make it pivotal. 
And then on top of that, there will be the infusion of the, of the light from the, that conjunction that, that emerges. And so we are, it's gonna be a, a very, very special time. And I'm actually looking very much forward to it. I, it. These things are always exciting to me because there's gonna be unexpected occurrences and benefits that come from it. And what we really need is something that will infuse us at this moment, that will energize us. And if, if this is it, boy, I'm sure welcoming it. And if not, then I know we can, we're, we're gonna have to generate this energy uh, collectively from within ourselves. And that's where we're at right now. So hopefully we'll use this as a pivot point in order to bring more light in and as an activation for those who aren't as aware perhaps as they would like to be or to, to open up others because it's a great conversation. It's a, it's a way of starting. It's something that everybody can see is happening. It's indisputable that it's occurring. Now, what it actually means, uh, we'll, we'll find out afterward, but it is a way of bringing people together and that's gonna bring a, a tremendous sense of wonder and also hope. Yeah, and that was actually the next question, is this gonna be revealed for all of those, or for only those who are consciously aware, or is it gonna aid in the lifting of people who are still totally asleep and have no idea? No, I think, it's, I think it's definitely gonna be an aid. We'll be talking about it. And again, this is like that, uh, what we started off our conversation about this uh, Galactic Federation story that suddenly is in every uh, website around the planet. Uh, you know, if people are asleep, it's like, oh, okay, the great, the Federation is real. Oh, thank God. You know, I thought all that was just Star Trek, right? And now they, they, they have something to hang their hat on. We can talk about it. We can, we can move on from there and start building. Right. That's exactly it. And I think the building and the keep moving is kind of the key to it. Keep your eyes open. Keep your curiosity, curiosity up. Stay awake and aware. Stay in your heart space. <laughs> keep connecting with your, with your soul or your spirit. Absolutely. Yeah. That's good advice at wow. any time, but in these I times, critical. Yeah, I want to thank you so much for being here. I don't want to take up too much of your day. We've been on here for an hour. And I think we caught most of the questions. Yeah, right. thank you. Um, I will throw out and I'll tell everybody who is on here right now and anybody who watches this futuristically, um, all of William's links will be below, including the one that he was talking about for the skin, skin gularity. I have a hard time saying that word. Um, go read his website. Go read articles posted past the stuff he's writing right now, I'm telling you, it'll, it'll open your, your mind. Um, I think you're ahead of your time on some of this stuff. I've been watching you for a long time and listening to ancient aliens and other stuff you've printed and done. And you were doing things and saying things before the, the top dogs put it out there. And um, I don't know, I'm, I'm in awe. I thank you so thank much you. for allowing us into your world and, and speaking to us. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. I, I have been yeah, I doing this a while and, and have been way ahead of the curve. I mean, that's a, uh, just, I'm very, uh, if I can use the word proud of that. And I, I just say that to say not to self glorify or anything, but that, yeah, if you're, I'm trying to be, I've tried to be looking into the future and what's coming in order to prepare people and just planting seeds among other presenters and speakers. We mentioned a couple of them who you know, are now on this story and on this platform because it is really what we need to be focusing on right now. And it's not about a, a particular person. It's just, it's about all of us at this time making these decisions and choices for all of future humanity. And that's where we're at right now. And I say that from the perspective of someone, once again, who's been, as you say, maybe ahead of the curve as compared to others and deeply looking into this. I'm, I'm practically begging people to, to get on top of this right now and, and help us make the, the right choice. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I totally agree. All right, sir, I'm gonna guide people. Can I tell people about your card readings? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Great. If you've never, if you've never done, I have to just put this out there because I've had quite a few experiences at this point um, with William doing a, a tarot reading for me and just altering the way I think. And I, I view you as a mentor at this point. I view you as one of my guides. Um, 
And when I get stuck, yeah, absolutely. When I get stuck, you're my go-to. I um, am jumping on <laughs> a quick conversation and and getting realigned. And sometimes I don't even know if you're, you know, you know, you flip the cards a lot, but sometimes you just start talking and you redirect mm -hmm. my whole process and thinking. And I just want to say thank you so much for that. It's been such thank a you. gift in my life, oh, especially the last nine months. It's been a huge, made a huge difference. Thank you. Well, I yeah. love that. So I'll throw that link below too, where you can get hold of William for that. Thank you very much. I love the one-on-one. -on -one. I've done thousands of readings over the years and just really, I learned so much uh, every time I'm interacting with someone in, in the course of those sessions and get to them. It helps you and now you make the ripples you're making and that's what it's all about. Yeah, I agree. It's beautiful. All right. So um, I'll put all that information below everybody who's in here. If you didn't get your question asked, send it to me an email and I'll, I'll see if I can touch um, base with William later, if that's okay, and ask some of these questions. But I think sure. we pretty much hit on everything that's in here. Yep, please um, do. So, it helps me know where right, people are I'm at. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and end the live. Yep. Okay. Perfect. All right, and we will, um, we'll be talking to you again soon. Thank you. All right, thank you. If I can figure out how to end the live. This is where.